Hello, Floss Tube. I am coming to you again. It's that time. It is April 3rd, I believe, that I'm filming this on. Um, in solidarity of everybody who decides to just wear their pajamas all the time, um, just think that getting dressed is a complete waste of time, um, I decided to be in my PJs as well. And um, the lovely Good Mood Today is brought to you by coffee. So, <laughs> between the comfortable clothes and the coffee, we're getting by today. <laughs> um, wondering how many of you are going a little stir crazy. I'm sure most of you are. Um, it's going on, what, three weeks for most of us? We're almost done with three weeks of being pretty much cooped up in our house, except for running to get groceries or whatnot. Hopefully none of you are running out of toilet paper. <laughs> um, I know the stories that finally, I think they caught on to this a little too late, of limiting one package of toilet paper per person. Um, kind of wish they'd done that when everybody was going bananas to begin with, because maybe it would have kept it so you could get toilet paper. When all of that first started, we had we had one package, but it was a big package, and we don't go through it that fast, so it was lasting us a good long time. In fact, I don't even know if we've completely used all of it. We might be down to the last roll that we had used in that pack, and luckily, my husband was at the store early enough, like 630 that he did find some another package of toilet paper for us to have so that when we did run out that we were not completely wiped out and didn't have anything to use um yeah i'm not a stalker or hoarder or anything like that for supplies so it's just you know when you need it hopefully it's going to be there um if people don't lose their minds then you know and just kind of take it easy then it's okay. Um, I've seen lots of videos about um, people, you know, toilet paper stuff. One of the videos, I think it was actually a news story that was online of a, and I believe it was in Texas, a um, trailer uh, um, semi that had, I don't know if it had rolled, jackknifed, whatever, but it had caught on fire and it was full of toilet paper and you just want to go, no! So um, there's been a lot of fun things out there. People who have come up with different ways to cleanse themselves after using the restroom um, in case they are in a shortage for toilet paper or they just want to conserve and not have to rely on it. So kind of um, suggesting installing um, these little systems that create bidet type of system on the toilet. It's not like you have another bidet actually, but it's just an adaptation to your toilet. Um, so you can have that, um, kind of creating your own bidet using squeeze bottles, things like that. Um, so there's been a lot of things. So hopefully you're not at that point yet, but if you are, at least we're getting creative. I like to remind myself that, um, you know, if you think about a hundred years ago, um, possibly even farther back, what did people use? There is a very, very funny video of a guy I watch. He's British and, um, he comes up with a lot of history types of, um, top tens or this is what happened back in the 1800s or whatever. And so one of his videos, and he's very with it when he does these videos, he's very put together. He doesn't lose it. He did one on what did they used to use before toilet paper? And he loses it so many times in that video and they have to start again with that particular segment. So it's pretty funny. Some of the things they used to use and some of the stuff they did and some of it's kind of gross. Um, so I'm sure we're all keeping ourselves entertained with lots of movies, videos, if you're anything like me, you're kind of getting tired of it all, or you've run out of certain things, like you've been watched all of a particular series, and now you've got to find something new. Yeah. And for all of those, 
of you who enjoy sports, I'm so sorry <laughs> because obviously there's no sports going on and they're rerunning old games or um, I heard somebody, a comedian or something say, yeah, they did the top, um, top 10 dribble passes of 2009. <laughs> On one of the sports shows so <laughs> it's like they're coming up with everything they possibly can and as you you notice the sports guys are not on the news anymore because there is nothing to report um so kind of along with that i was going to ask you what have you been watching movies um tv youtube whatever um there's a couple things that i was going to mention besides what the the ones I've already talked about is um, Jimmy Kimmel cracks me up. I don't typically watch the Tonight Show. Um, if there's clips of certain things on YouTube from his show, like he he is big in games. He's a big kid at heart, really. So he loves to play games. So Pictionary, um, charades, variety of things. And so sometimes those will wind up on YouTube and I will watch them because they're, they're pretty funny. So as just about everybody else, he's doing a home version of the show. I think they might be running reruns of the actual shows, um, but he also has a home version. And um, I'm not sure if there is a goal of how long it's going to be because when he first started doing it, it would just be one video that was like 10 or 15 minutes long. And now it seems like it has gotten longer, but not only longer, but for whatever reason, they've cut it down into separate videos. So he may do one segment of videos and even have a video chat with a star. But if the star is going to do something else, they end up putting it on another video. So you have to kind of click through two or three videos for one show at, on, at times. Jimmy has a very unique house. <laughs> In one of the videos, he was sitting on his front porch, and it looked like a normal, nice little house with a um, kind of porchish front to it, with railings and everything. He's got a really big backyard. He set up a tent in the backyard one time. That was interesting watching him do that. Uh, but the inside of the house, nothing like you would expect. It looks like a tree house inside. I'm not kidding. And I think this has a lot to do with his personality. Like I said, he's just a big kid at heart. And his wife must go along with it. <laughs> she doesn't seem like she would be that kind of person. But, I mean, she did marry him. So she must know what his personality was going to be like. Um, yeah, it literally looks like a giant tree house. It's very woody inside. Uh, raw beams. I mean, really rustic raw beams. Not sanded or anything like that. Um, he has a slide, a tube slide from the upstairs to the downstairs. The stairs, the railing is like branches. And um, I saw in one, one or two of the videos that at the foot of the stairs off to the side, it looked like a tree going up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the inside is not this um you know stars home kind of look where it's all put together and very nice and elegant it's very much like a tree house it's got a lot of um he's got like instruments for his kids to play like little drums and keyboard piano stuff to play on um obviously he's got a big tv who doesn't so that's in his tree house um a lot of kids stuff on the walls um paintings you wouldn't expect it's almost like somebody painted some non-professional artist painted a bunch of stuff whenever he does interviews he's sitting he's sitting in the room i think he calls it the birch room so the wallpaper looks like birch bark and he's got all these pictures like i said of nothing super fancy special i mean it literally looks like just regular old pictures or paintings that anybody could have painted so he's very down to earth it looks like a lot of fun and the shows he does oh my goodness I just 
howl with laughter. I don't know how, his wife is the one who is filming this. And I don't know, she must be immune to him by now because I don't know how she doesn't just laugh her head off when he does his monologue or the hashtags or whatever. I'm just rolling. I probably waking everybody up in the house as I watch it, but it is so funny. So fun. So give that a look if you want to have something new to see. Um, there, there's so many things that you could mention that people have put out there. The one thing that I was really kind of impressed with and I was going to mention is this UK family. So I think there was like four kids and then the mom and dad, something like that. Um, I don't believe they have a YouTube channel. I think it just made the news and now it has been shared many, many times. So I will try and put this in the description, but it's through the Guardian News. So that's one of their news um, stations that they have out there. And it's called Family Lockdown Les Miserables Remix. That's not the whole title that they put it under, but you would be able to find it if you know that much. So they take um, one of the songs from Les Miserables and they sing it. And of course, they changed some of the words to, quote, go with this quarantine. So not only is it a funny, you know, remix of this song, but they can actually sing. They did a pretty good job singing. Oh, I think every single one of them sang. Dad didn't sing as much. He did towards the end, but um, they did a really good job. They did a really good job. So go check that out. Um, it's, it's, worth, it's worth watching. Uh, so as to anything else going on, I'm going to show you a video of, um, I took a walk. Um, I'm trying to mix things up in the video. So it's not just me sitting here, um, talking to you like this the whole time and showing things every once in a while. So, um, I took a walk and recorded, um, a story and you'll see that in there. I show, I've got the video of my stitches my whips and a finish a couple finishes um and as I did last time I did those so that you weren't necessarily you weren't seeing me I just showed them as they were sitting on the table and that way I could I felt like I had a little more control of showing you up close things as well as moving things around um instead of trying to do that from here and then get it on the camera just right without glare and whatnot um so I've got those two things. Um, I think those are the only other videos that I had that I was going to show you. Um, so I think that might be about it. Hello, your roving reporter here. Yes, I'm out for a walk. And I uh, thought I would share some other things going on with me um, that aren't necessarily stitching related. A little bit, but other things as well. I, uh, let's see, the 24th of March, so it's been a little over a week now, my husband and I celebrated our anniversary. The big 3-0 people, the big 3-0. Yeah, we made it 30 years. Um, it's been a great 30 years. It's been full of so much, obviously. 30 years is a long time, and I wouldn't do it with anybody else. It's been a, um, you know, great time, as I said, uh, loving husband puts up with all my crap. <laughs> uh, you got to have somebody who's going to put up with, you know, a certain amount of stuff to stick with them for 30 years. Um, but yeah, it was quite the uh, milestone. Obviously, with everything going on and the virus, we didn't get to do anything. <laughs> we were pretty much stuck at home. <laughs> Um, not that I don't think he had planned anything. And sometimes I just wait and see if he's going to plan something instead of just having me do it all the time. Um, so yeah, we have pretty much stuck at home. We, uh, got, you know, like takeout. It was really simple takeout. It wasn't like fancy takeout or anything like that. So that was really all that we ended up doing. But the... The memorable part of the day was my husband went and got the food 
and when he came home, he uh, stepped in like cat poop or something that was in the driveway. Yeah, we have pea gravel in part of our driveway and there's been some animal, I'm guessing it's a cat, has decided to make this one spot their pooping grounds. <sighs> Lovely, isn't it? Um, so he stepped in it, not knowing it, even though I warned him it was there. I just hadn't gotten to the point of taking care of it because it's been, the weather's been nasty. And uh, then tracked it throughout the house. Oh yeah. And, you know, guys aren't really, for the most part, I know that there's exceptions to everything, but guys are not really uh, detail oriented in seeing things. You know, the old funny thing where your kids and your husband will both go into a refrigerator looking for something and you say, it's in there, it's in there. And they both will come out and say, didn't find it. And you open the door and it's right there. Yeah, well, same thing with this. Got poop tramped throughout my house. And I know that he is, I'm the one who discovered that it was in the house. And I know that he is not going to be able to find all the places where it's at. He's either not gonna see it legitimately or he's just not gonna pay attention to the details to find it all. So he cleaned up a little bit and I cleaned up most of it. Yeah. Happy anniversary, dear. I love you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, quite the day. Uh, with that, I also wanted to tell you Kind of the funny story of how we met since it is an anniversary uh, well let's go back to the beginning well i i know this can be sounding a little convoluted but trust me it, it's part of the story i had been dating a guy and he introduced me he wanted to go visit a friend and his friend lived with his grandmother because i think his friend's parents had died or something so that he lived with his grandparent uh, grandma so I was introduced to this grandma the relationship that this guy was dating wasn't that great so eventually ended and I ended up calling this older lady to see if she would take me to church because I knew she went to church and I was wanting you know off and on throughout my childhood teen years and stuff, I had gone to different churches with, whether it was friends or whatever, neighbors, and I was trying to find a church to go to that I wanted to be part of. I wasn't a Christian at the time, but I wanted to get back into church. So I called this woman up because I knew she went, and I didn't have a car, so I asked her if she would take me, which she was very, very happy to take me. So she uh, picks me up and takes me, and we go almost every Sunday. I think there's some times where she ends up missing for one reason or another. And about a month, maybe a little over a month into it, um, I noticed that the adult um, group there, and I don't know if it was mostly one of like a Sunday school class type of group or whatever, was going to have a Halloween party. So I started going in about September and then in October, obviously, they were going to have a Halloween party. And uh, I asked her if she would take me. Well, she said yes, but I also did not know that she did not prefer to drive at night. She just said yes, she would take me. I believe, it's been a long time to remember this, the day of the party. She calls me and says, I'm not going to be able to take you. And at first I'm like, oh man, I was really looking forward to this. It would have been fun. Maybe meet new people, whatever. But then she comes back and says, but I found you a ride. Okay. So she tells me the name who to look for, you know, who it's going to be, because I've never met this person. Don't know who it is. So finally, 
This person shows up, knocks on my door. Of course, we're in Halloween costumes. This is the first time I meet this person. Comes to the door, dressed as Dracula, and it's my husband. Never met him before. Not only are we in Halloween costumes, but this is really awkward, because I don't know you. Uh, we had a great time. The party was a lot of fun, but it's like, really? This is how I'm going to be introduced to him? So, yeah, it was uh, quite the introduction. Never forget it. Here are my whips and finishes for the last two weeks. So I had been working on the tea balls before. I had shown you that. Um, I do have a finish for one of them. That is this one. I'm going to show you all angles. If you notice in the pattern, it does have that border around it, and I did mention that I probably wouldn't do the border. Um, I mean, it, it would have been really tough to get it on because um, it's getting really close to that edge. And the, as I mentioned also, the, um, the mesh starts getting a little wonky on those corners. Um, so it does make a little bit of a difference. Um, yeah, because as you can see in the corners, they start to elongate on those, those flowers. So yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. But uh, they are a little difficult. And of course, we have the Penelope cat is back. Yes. Um, I did start a second one. Let me move that out of the way. It is... You know, it's got a tree, so it is going to be that one there. I am modifying it slightly. The other thing that I'm doing differently is um, in the instructions, it does not mention, it, it talks about, she says, uh, you can either use one or two threads. She preferred the two, even though normally on linen she only does one. But with this... Um, it felt filled in better. I did not see anything about whether you should go over one or two squares of this mesh. Now, when I did this, as I said, you can't really leave room. There's not a lot. I did this over two. Two threads over two. If I had done it over one, I think I would have had plenty of room for that border. Not that I'm missing it, but that's, I'm just saying I would have. On this one, I am doing it over one. So that, because first of all, I wanted to see what the difference it was. And I am using two threads. So it's, it is definitely tighter fit with the two threads over one versus two threads over two. So I'll get kind of close in on some of these stitching. So it's clear, you can see the X's really well. And in here, you can still see the X's, they're just much smaller and tighter. Not wanting to focus very well. But, I mean, it's definitely a difference. So, um, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if, uh, I think I'm gonna like both, but if I want to fit everything on the pattern in. I think I have to go over one. Uh, for the small tea balls, I think it's gonna be better over one because it's just such a smaller surface. Um, when you do the small ones, most of them are very similar when they do the small, small ones. This one right here is just one of these roses right in the center. So I think that could go over two squares even on the small one because it's just one rose. So it'll probably fit pretty well. But the others are um, that's kind of a smaller version of all this. And it's a lot to go on a small t-ball. All right. So we'll move that out of the way. And I'll show you the other things. So the next thing I have is a finish. 
and it is this one, the Drawn Threads. I had just enough time in my 10 days to finish this project completely. And there it be. So, it's probably around 14, 16 inches long. I'm not looking at the pattern, so I'm not sure. I'm just guessing. And only about three inches wide at the most. So, it's not very wide. I mean, I can set my hand next to it. You can see it's pretty, it's not that big. Um, cute. I've got the cute little bees. Cute little bees in several spots. There, and up by the A. Um, the center of the flowers is not just an X. And of course, I don't have the pattern near me. Let me see if I can find what they called it. Um... Oh, square boss. These, those are square bosses. And there's a whole bunch of them. So, there's six and eight. There's nine of these little square bosses in that center piece. So, that's that area right there. So, they kind of look like X's. A little odd, but um, I don't know how much I can zoom in without it starting to unfocus. So you do have an X in there, but then you put all these little, um, I'll show you what, what you have to do. You put all these little side little X, um, lines on the X. So um, that's what that is. And then of course you got the beak for the bird. And I think that's all the specialty stitches that I had to do in this. Um, this up here also had that center the square boss stitch in the center of the flower. So all done. Now I need to FFO it. Love it. Very springy. It is sitting out where I can kind of hanging, laying against something so I can see it while it's still spring. Uh, the next thing, I kind of piled these up so that they could just be moved out of the way and I didn't have to move them so they look nice when I showed them, is this. So I showed you that I had gotten this pattern in the last video, but I didn't know when I was going to start stitching it with all the other things. And I'm just squeezing it in. I work on this for a little bit, and then I um, work on my normal stuff that I do on for 10 days. So I've started doing this, and obviously this is the two separate patterns that go together. There is a nice picture here of them together. I mean, they aren't stitched actually on one piece. It looks like there's a fold down the middle so that you can see where the two pieces, but I'm putting it on one piece. And that's as far as I've gotten so far, which is mostly this side. Um, I mean, I do have the urn from the other pattern on this side. Something I wanna point out, in case you are going to do it on one piece, is that the pattern obviously just has half of the urn on it. And without thinking, as I'm going along, I'm just kind of on auto mode um, of stitching all of these lines, these vertical lines here. And I just go across and I'm getting over to about here. I started on this side and I'm kind of going across. I'm like, my count's off. Why is my count off? I counted it several times when I did, because I did this top row first. And then the next row across the horizontal one. And like, I counted that so many times, there's no way it should be off. So then I got to looking at the pattern a little more. <clears throat> and what they did, and I'm not sure why, but what they did is the center space. So if this was the center space right here, there was instead of one line for the center, there was two space lines. And then I wouldn't have been off. I would have had just the, the right amount. So that was frustrating. 
So because of that, and because I had stitched all of this first, and then I'd come down and start stitching all of this this way, I wasn't going to pick all of this out. I was not going to frog it. So as I got closer and started working up here on this one, what I ended up doing was adding an extra X on here and an extra stitch on here. And so there is basically one extra vertical line in here that shouldn't be. That's our cat feeder, sorry. Um, I hadn't stitched any of this stuff here or the handle for the urn yet, so it was fine. It, you know, I can make it work. The only thing I'll have to do is somehow with the stuff in the center, which in here you can see it's like a berry, strawberry or something. I will probably just have to make that one stitch wider so that it fits between the birds properly. I don't think it's going to be a terrible thing. I have no idea. Maybe once I get to this border and come around here, uh, <laughs> it may be more of a heartache and a pain than I really want it to be. But I don't think it will be. I think I'm just going to have to make do. Maybe make the center peak on this one higher and one lower in the center. I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go. It kind of makes it my own special, unique take on this. Um, so I'm loving it. This is one thread over two. Um, it's not the actual called for. I just picked, as you can see, they use more of a cream tan color and I wanted something a little different. So I went through my stash, found this. They recommend 36. I believe this is a 32 count. So with the one thread, I was kind of not sure if it was going to turn out, but I think it looks all right. Um, there's always debate. People are like, I like the filled in better when it's got two threads. And some people, I like the sparseness of one. I think it's fine. I think it's fine with one. So there's that. I um, actually called Acorns and Threads to order some thread, and I will do a drive-by pickup for that because I did not have all of these threads when I started. I had a good number of them, but not all of them. The next thing that I'm working on, and this next one is the one I started for my next 10 days, which was the four corners. I went to that. It is um, designed, it says Rosewood Manor. Karen Klu Kluba is the designer. I love this pattern. So pretty. Green is my color. That's my favorite color, but with the pink shades in it, mm, perfection. And the letters are nice too because they're black, so they stand out very nicely, but they're all a different style for the most part. Very unique in all of their individualness. And this is what I've done so far. I really, really like this. I think when I had stopped on my um, 31 days of new starts in January, I had this done, I think this one done, and these two done. I think that was it. So in about four or five days now since I've been working on this, that's, I've finished all of the rest of this. Beautiful. Love it, love it, love it. Now I'm getting a little bit of shadow on the one side because the window is on my one other side. But yeah, it's turning out really nice. This is an L, not a U. The U is gonna look like that, just a funky L, something different. But yeah, it's turning out very nice. So we'll see how much I get done in my 10 days worth of stitching, clearly not the whole thing, because it does take a while to get through all of this. Um, maybe I will get, because this part right here is the same on the other side. I'll show you the pattern here. So I'm almost finished with this. 
And then this side is the same. It's, and then the top and bottom will be different, but identical to each other. Um, maybe I'll get a lot of this side down. I'll move over and work on this side so I can have just the whole thing across. Pretty much done. I think it's doable because I did have to do a couple of these hearts within this four or five days that I've been working on it so far. And I don't have to do those now, so it would just be all this other stuff. Um, so... I think it's doable. So that's where I'm at with all of my stitches that I'm working on now, the finishes. I will not have any purchases to show you because I'm not getting anything. I'm not going, obviously the stores are closed and I'm, I'm ordering stuff. I'm trying to support Janine at Acorns and Threads, but I'm not, um, I'm not like trying to find patterns necessarily right now. Um, if this thing, this quarantine stuff carries on too long, then I may have to find things um, that I would like to get. I'm sure there's patterns I've looked at before and I wouldn't mind getting. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out which ones um, and supporting her again, either later this month or in May or something. It sounds like she's pretty busy with a lot of people calling in and placing some orders either to pick up or just be shipped to them. So um, I'm hoping that she's coming through this fairly well and it's not too much of a hardship on her. Um, if you have a local needle workshop, please, please, please help support them so that they can stay in business when this is all over with. Um, so with that, we'll say adios and talk to you about some other stuff here in a minute. Alrighty. I hope you enjoyed all of that. Um, it was a very nice day yesterday, getting out to walk. Uh, it, I did it at just the right time because I got in my car and within 15 minutes it was pouring. And it didn't really look like it was going to rain, but for some reason it did. Um, at least right in that little pocket. I was able to, a week ago, get out and go for a hike in, um, it's called Hoyt Arboretum up by the zoo in Portland. Um, it's very nice. It's part of the um, forest park. Uh, if you live in Portland, you probably know where that's at. If you don't, if you've seen pictures of Portland, there's um, hills slash mountains, whatever you want to call them, in the background a lot of times. And not, not the view of Mount Hood, but the stuff that's directly right up against um, the downtown city area. That's called the West Hills. And that whole area almost, um, from there down, I think it's 15 or 20 miles at least, is park, Forest Park. Um, it's just this huge area. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people who do go and, and hike through those trails and stuff. But um, I don't know how many actually do. Uh, the parts in Hoyt Arboretum are very well traveled and hiked and walked around in and stuff. But the stuff that gets down farther, it's a little bit more remote. And um, I don't know how many people actually hike down in those areas. But um, this is the far end, the far south end of that what's considered Forest Park. Um, and so I was able to get up there last week. We had a nice day. Um, nice enough. I mean, it did end up starting to sprinkle the later in the day, so I just was able to sneak another hike in. So I am getting out and keeping myself from losing my mind, <laughs> which is very helpful. Um, hopefully you all are finding ways to keep yourself busy because unfortunately we probably have another month of this. Um, just not good news for some people. For those that are introverts, it's great news. And I am partially 
an introvert, partially an extrovert. I will talk to people while I'm out and about. I mean, just strangers. I might talk to somebody who's in the store or when I'm on my walk or something. Um, I do stuff like that, but I don't mind being at home. I don't like being cooped up at home all the time, though. That's the thing. I like to be able to be out and about. Um, usually nature -y related. My husband does not like this at all. He is very much an extrovert and he would very much like to be going in to work. I think he doesn't mind working occasionally from home. Um, so before all this happened, maybe once a week at the most, sometimes it wasn't even every single week, he might work from home um, just for the convenience of it. But um, for the most part, he likes getting out and being around people. This is not something he likes at all. So find something to do. You can find your way to keep busy if at all possible. You know, I sit there and think about in the 1800s. Yeah, they were doing stuff just to survive throughout the each day. So they had to grow their food or make their clothes or mend their clothes or whatever, wash their clothes, which would take all day. Um, but, you know, they had pretty monotonous lives and they managed to survive just fine. So... At least we have TVs and YouTube and phones and whatever else to keep us busy. Um, so try to put ourselves into perspective that we have more than most, um, even in some other countries. And we're very fortunate for all that. And it's it, it will end. It will end. Keep looking at that light at the end of the tunnel. It will be here before we know it. It's kind of like our birthdays. You're like, wow, it's going to be a whole nother year before we have a birthday. And all of a sudden it's here. So this will end. It will come to an end. So hang in there and hopefully you're having good days. More good days than bad days. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.